Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. I hope you're all safe and healthy. Today, we will refresh our knowledge about the most common complications during pregnancy. If you're ready, let's start! First trimester, ectopic pregnancy. It is the implantation of the fertilized ovum outside the uterus. The most common site is in the fallopian tube. Other sites include cervix, ovary, and abdominal cavity. Risk factors, tubal damage from pelvic inflammatory disease, or from previous pelvic or tubal surgery. The use of intrauterine devices, tubal atony or esposum. Key manifestations. First, we have the positive colon sign. It is the bluish discoloration around the umbilicus. Early in pregnancy, there is irregular vaginal bleeding and dull abdominal pain on the affected side. Severe and sudden abdominal pain when the tube is already ruptured. Then, syncope and referred shoulder pain will occur as the abdomen fills with blood. And then, we have the board-like abdomen. HCG titers are also abnormally low. Management Laparotomy It is done to ligate the ruptured vessels and remove or repair the damaged fallopian tube. If the fallopian tube hasn't ruptured, methotrexate followed by leucoverin are prescribed to stop the trophoblastic cells from growing. This therapy continues until negative HCG levels are achieved. IV fluid administration, blood transfusion, then monitor the vital signs because the most common complication is shock. Always remember the hypo, hypo, taki, taki, hypotension, hypothermia tachycardia, and tachypnea. So watch out for these manifestations. Next, we have abortion. It is the termination of pregnancy before the age of gestation. Risk factors, teratogenic agents, placental malfunction, and torch syndrome which stands for toxoplasmosis, other infections like HIV, HEPA B or syphilis, rubella, cytomegalovirus, and herpes. Types Threatened abortion The cervix is closed and with minimal vaginal bleeding. The most common management for this is bed rest, folic acid, and dufastone. Next, we have inevitable abortion. There is both bleeding and lower abdominal cramping with cervical dilatation. Induced abortion. It is intentionally done. Complete abortion, it is called complete because all the products of conception are being expelled. Incomplete abortion, not all the products of conception are being expelled, so it needs to undergo curatage. Complete abortion is less bleeding compared to incomplete abortion. 
Next, we have the missed abortion. The fetus died in the utero. Lastly, we have habitual abortion, which means it has already three consecutive abortions. Second trimester, Haida tidiform mole. It is also known as gestational trophoblastic disease due to rapid proliferation of trophoblastic layer. H. mole is a developmental anomaly of the placenta that converts the chorionic villi into a mass of clear grape-like vesicles. The chorion is the fetal membrane closest to the uterine wall that gives rise to the placenta. Risk factors, high maternal age, poor maternal nutrition, defective ovum, and with previous each small pregnancy. Key manifestations, intermittent or continuous bright red or brownish vaginal bleeding, an increase HCG levels, absence of fetal heart tones, the ultrasound result will show a snowball or grape-like vesicles and fail to reveal a fetal structure. Abdominal enlargement is inappropriate for the age of gestation. Lastly is excessive nausea and vomiting. Management, dilation and curettage, then send the contents to the laboratory for analysis. Monitor vaginal bleeding. HCG monitoring weekly until it remains normal for three consecutive weeks, then periodic follow-up for one to two years because of an increased risk of neoplasm. Methotrexate as prophylaxis. This is the drug of choice for choriocarcinoma. Advise the patient to avoid pregnancy until HCG levels are normal. It may take up to two years. This is to avoid the future complications. Before we proceed to the complications during the third trimester, just feel free to leave a suggestion for our next topic. And kindly also do click the subscribe button below to keep you updated. Tap the board, Wonder Nurses! Third trimester. First, we have placenta previa. The placenta is implanted in the lower segment of the uterus. Risk factors, advanced maternal age, multiple pregnancies, and the presence of scar or tumor in the uterus. Types, marginal. The edge of the placenta touches the cervix. Partialis, the placenta partially covered the cervix. Totalis, the placenta completely covered the cervix. Key manifestations, painless, bright red vaginal bleeding. The ultrasound will show an implantation of the placenta in the lower uterine segment. Management, if less than 34 weeks, hospitalization and bed rest to avoid preterm labor. NSD or CS depending on the placental placement and maternal and fetal stability. Don't perform vaginal or rectal examination unless equipment is available for vaginal or cesarean delivery. Watch out for signs and symptoms of shock, fetal distress, and infection. Patients with placenta previa 
are at higher risk for infection. Blood transfusion, if necessary. Abruptio placenta. It is the premature separation of the placenta from the uterine wall. Risk factors. Decreased blood flow to the placenta. Multifetal pregnancy. Abdominal trauma. Pregnancy induced hypertension because it causes vasoconstriction that results to a decrease in the blood supply. Types Apparent or revealed There is bleeding from the site of placental separation and it drains through the cervix. Next is concealed. There is no evidence of vaginal bleeding because it remains within the uterus and typically forms a clot retroplacentally. Key manifestations Acute abdominal pain with dark red vaginal bleeding either concealed or apparent. So if you notice, in placenta previa, it is painless and with bright red vaginal bleeding because it is a low-lying implantation. While here in abruptio placenta, it is painful and with dark vaginal bleeding since there is a premature separation of the placenta to the uterus. So don't be confused, okay? Next we have rigid abdomen. Lastly, is an ultrasound result that will confirm the diagnosis and will show the current location of the placenta. Clot or hematoma may also be apparent. Management. Avoid pelvic or vaginal examination. Position the patient in a left lateral recumbent position to relieve the pressure in the vena cava from the enlarged uterus. Cesarean delivery. Blood transfusion. And watch out for its common complication like disseminated intravascular coagulation, and fetal distress. Our last topic is pregnancy-induced hypertension. It is characterized by hypertension, proteinuria, and edema. Risk factors, 18 years old and below or greater than 30 years of age. Obesity, multifetal pregnancy, and present conditions like hypertension, renal disease, and diabetes mellitus. Types First, we have gestational hypertension. It is a blood pressure of 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. Next is mild eclampsia. It is a blood pressure of 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury, proteinuria of positive 1 to positive 2, weight gain of more than 2 pounds per week in the second trimester, and 1 pound per week in the third trimester. Mild edema in the upper extremities or face. Next, we have severe preeclampsia. It is a blood pressure of 160 over 110 millimeters of mercury. Proteinuria of positive 3 to positive 4. Generalized edema, and in this type, there is a potent vasoconstriction that results to a decrease in blood supply to vital organs like kidneys liver, and brain. A decrease in blood supply to the kidneys will result to oliguria, while a decrease in blood supply to the liver will result to what we call HELP syndrome that stands for hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelet count, which will put the patient at risk for bleeding. The patient will also experience epigastric pain. A decreased blood supply to the brain will cause frontal headaches, 
blurred vision, irritability, and hyperreflexia. Lastly is the eclampsia. It is a blood pressure higher than 160 over 100 millimeters of mercury and the presence of tonic-clonic seizure. Blood chemistry result will show increased BUN, creatinine, uric acid, and liver function studies like SGPT and SGOT. Management, high-protein diet and low-sodium diet. Maintain seizure precautions, antihypertensives medication like hydralazine or diazoxide. Betamethasone is administered to accelerate fetal lung maturation. Magnesium sulfate is also administered to prevent seizure. Watch out for its toxicity like decreased respiratory rate, urine output, and deep tendon reflex. Our antidote is calcium gluconate. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.